Welcome to this edition of Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. Our guest today is Bill Salas. Hello, Bill. Hello, Dr. Clarkson. Good to be back on the program again. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you. I appreciate your really um, depth of uh, research and understanding that you bring to the biblical prophecy. You've been doing this for, I guess, I don't know, decades. Yeah, I um, actually be- became a Christian in 1990. Okay. So 25 years, and of course, I came to know the Lord through Bible prophecy. I was actually attending a Bible study being taught by Chuck Missler. I know he's been a guest here before. Uh-huh. And he was teaching on the book of Revelation, which I like to talk about that testimony. I won't talk about it necessarily long here, but because Bible prophecy is a witnessing tool. Agreed. It can lead people to the Lord. You know, we've got three forms of evangelism going on in these end times. One is the basic good news of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. He rose from the grave on the third day. He ascended to heaven and we can have eternal life by putting our faith into him. That's the gospel message taught across the pulpits. Great gospel. We've also got eschatological evangelism. We're living in the time when the signs are happening and we can use that to let people know the the Bible prophecy is just another way you can come to know the Lord. Revelation 19.10 says that uh, the the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ himself. And then thirdly, not thought about very much these days is supernatural evangelism. The Lord is reaching into repressed areas through dreams, visions, and healings, and he himself is bringing people into the family of God. And when you say repressed areas, I think you're referring to those places that are close to missionaries and uh, you know places in the Middle East in the 1040 window. Yeah, it is, uh, especially like Iran, with the repressive Iranian regime, Syrian refugee camps, uh, it's going on in China, India, uh, you know, places like that. So. Right, yeah. Well, we're uh, happy to have you back. We've done a couple of shows on what you're calling the now prophecies. And uh, just to, to recap that now, as opposed to the next and the last, now prophecies, as Bill is presenting them, they're things that could happen at any moment. Some of it is beginning to come together right before our eyes. Next prophecies have a few preconditions, but they could follow pretty rapidly right. once those preconditions arrive. And then last prophecies will be those things that are actually happening during the final uh, you know, seven years of this planet before Jesus comes back visibly and physically and begins to rule in Jerusalem. Right, and the now prophecies really are what's very relevant for our, our generation. Yeah, everything here. Everything's sort of converging right now. Right. But you know, what, what could affect us right now, our households, our families, and that's what, what I want to explain. You know, one of the things I do in the book is I put mankind presently on God's prophetic timeline. Right. You know, and there's two marquee events that this generation needs to be focused on. One was sixty eight years ago at the rebirth of Israel in nineteen forty eight. 68 years closer now, marching toward Ezekiel 38 and 39. Some of the most descriptive verses in the Bible. The prophecy through which the Lord is going to uphold his holy name. Matter of fact, it's so important. Take a moment, because this is good news. Can you read 39.7, Ezekiel 39.7? Now, dear viewers, I want you to listen to this. This is an event that God has specifically selected in the end times to which he's going to let the world know he's a holy God. This is a powerful verse, and God himself is speaking. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore and the heathen or the Gentiles, the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Right. See, that's a, he's going to have a very captivated audience and this most powerful prophecy. I think that's why he made it so descriptive. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this prophecy because this is the event he's going to use to make the world, let the world know he's a holy God. The world has forgotten he's a holy God. You know, uh, they, they're operating with the, the nations of the world. They're operating apart from God's foreign policy right. in Genesis 12, where it says, I'll bless those who bless Israel. I'll curse those who curse them. It's about Abraham and his descendants. Uh, they're operating with their own domestic policy apart from godliness and God's will. And God's going to put, put everything back correct in this big prophecy here. So we're really close to this event. But this event is a next prophecy. It has some preconditions. They're spelled out in Ezekiel 38, verses 8 through 13. Israel has to be dwelling securely without walls, bars, nor gates. They've got to be extremely wealthy because Russia and their cohorts, the invaders, which include Iran and Turkey, and there's nine members all together that come with Russia, they're coming into that Israel for plunder and booty. And Israel's not dwelling securely because of other events, and we talked about those in the last show, Mm -hmm. the now prophecies, things that prevent them from becoming secure, why they have a wall and walls and security checkpoints throughout Israel. They've got to deal with the ancient hatred, the Arab enemies around them. 
that, fo- that comes through in several prophecies. Isaiah 17, Damascus, that happens in Psalm 83. We talked about those. But just to be clear for the viewers, listen, two big events you need to be focused on because here's where you are. You're 68 years now from the rebirth of Israel. That's, that's a miracle of God. Don't think this was a moral obligation in the United Nations. There's all kinds of prophecies that God said he would bring the Jews back into the land. Here we are 68 years later and we're setting up. We see what's going on with Russia and their relationships with Iran. Turkey doesn't like Israel that much anymore now. We see this Ezekiel 38 event is about to happen. So we've got this little window period of time. Is it 68 more years? Can't even keep it on the screen. No, I don't think so. I think we're inside the screen here. Mm -hmm. We're in this now area here. This is where we are right now. It's good. Now everybody wants to know, I'm sure, you have a uh, section of the book on America. Yeah, and we co- sort of saved that section for this program, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did. America in Decline. Yeah, the chapter's called The Decline of America. And in that chapter, I talk about, there's actually three chapters devoted toward America inside of the Now Prophecies book. Um, and my concern is I look and I present the biblical and historical reasons why our country should be very concerned about what's going on. We'll talk about those first. And then I also talk about maybe the, the biblical and prophetic aspects of why we could be in Bible prophecy and be concerned. So we'll talk about that in a second. But the, the, the historical b- biblical precedent that we need to be concerned about in this country, we have crossed every dangerous biblical boundary that we could cross. As a nation. As a nation. We have kicked God out of our culture, government, and society. We took him out of prayer and Bible reading in the schools in the 60s. We have legalized abortion in 1973 with Roe versus Wade, killing about a million babies per year now. Um, God defines, you know, birth at the conception, right? He's not, you know, he's not in favor of abortion. We know that. That's that's murder in all intents and purposes. Right. Um, he, the Supreme Court struck down a key uh, part of the DOMA Defense of Marriage Act. The de- biblical role of marriage one man could be married to one should be married to one woman in 2013 i believe that was 2015 of course this striking down a doma paved the way for the approval of same-sex marriages in 2015 which on june 26 2015 the supreme court approved same-sex marriages uh, a dear friend of ours dr david reagan of lamb lion ministry said that is the day the nation died uh-huh. i've heard him say that yeah, so we've crossed those. Now, whenever nations and empires have crossed those dangerous boundaries in the past, a couple things happened. One, they never digressed back and rectified that. Re, you know, we went back to where they were. And two, they were destroyed, judged, and usually destroyed as a result. So I, I know a lot of Americans think that God's seeing the Star Spangled Banner up in heaven draped in the American flag. But the bottom line is, you know, God can only hand, so, handle so much spit in his face and stepping on his toes, you know, poking him in the eye. Uh, he can only take so much of that. We don't have impunity for the way we're behaving here. That's right. And he's been trying to warn us through the prophetic voices, the remedial judgments, the disasters we've had in the country, and the prophetic leader and, and the uh, leaders we have. We've currently got a leader who is pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, anti-Israel, and, and Barack Obama. And he's in his lame duck year, but I mean, the bottom line is we've been given a leader that the country voted in and uh, I, you know, I'm just telling you, folks, you need to be concerned about what's going on from those perspectives. And also the other concern is anti-Israel. You know, we, if we want to be blessed, we need to be a blessing to Israel. God's plan of redemption was through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on That's through right. the Messiah. And he said, I'll bless those who bless my plan of redemption, but I'll curse those who get in the way of it. And uh, I'm very concerned about uh, this Iran nuclear deal where we're putting Israel, compromising Israel's security with Iran, etc. Well, you you <clears throat> describe these things as putting us in a danger zone. What does that danger uh, look like? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, when God decides to judge and possibly destroy a nation, uh, we have biblical precedent for that. You know, it's interesting. Off camera, you and I were talking about this. We went and saw that TV, sh- that movie mm-hmm. called uh, Exodus, God Gods and Kings. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're not recommending it as a you know biblical witnessing right. tool to, to the viewers. But it, and it's a takeoff from the Ten Commandment movie with uh, Moses and Cecil B. DeMille made that you know back in the '60s or something like that. Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston was in it. Um, and the reason I liked that movie and the reason I'm even taking airtime right now to talk about it was with the cinemagraph- cine- cinematography they have today, the graphics. When when in that movie, when the plagues hit Egypt, my first thought, Kevin, was, look, if God wants to take out a country, He will have no problem. He will have no 
uh, lack of resources That's right. to do He's that. Gotta, and it can happen as quick as he wants. And once it starts to happen, you will not be able to reverse that tide. Mm. So we sit here and think in our easy chairs watching, you know, the sports games on Sunday and everything that we're insulated from God's judgment and disaster. We're not. You know, we, we think we're, we're so fat and sassy that we said goodbye to God. But you know what? If God said goodbye to us, that's why we're seeing these things happening where we're given over toward the lusts of the flesh and the perversion and homosexuality, the things in Romans 1 that talks about that, you know, that's the way God's wrath gets poured out and revealed to nations in Romans chapter 1. It's almost an internal destruction. Yeah. From within. It, it, it rots from the core out. Yeah, absolutely. So my concern is um, what we need to think about as believers, okay, is if judgment's coming to this country, first, maybe Jesus will rapture us and take us out before that happens. But, you know, we don't know that. We were here when 911 happened, and there were Christians that were in that building. That's right. It was among those 3,000 that died. Uh, there may have been Christians in San Bernardino that were killed not too long ago. They probably were. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're not insulated from what can happen here. So what um, I'm going to share a story where I think we are, biblically speaking, and need to be concerned about in America. And I'll tell you a story. A lot of your viewers know Chuck Missler. We talked about him at the beginning of the program. He and I were on a TV show together. And we were in the green room having dinner. And Chuck Missler for quite a while, maybe the last couple of decades, was teaching for America that we needed to repent. And he was, quote, Second Chronicles 714. And it says, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I would hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And even though that was... Solomon praying for protection over the nation of Israel. You know, we felt, well, maybe that app principal application could affect for our country. We kind of saw that happen with Nineveh when Jonah went to Nineveh. Yes. Uh -huh. And he said, you've got 40 days until you'll be destroyed. And the king of Nineveh I issued a, pro a national proclamation and he and the nation repented and the Lord relented. So, you know, the, the thought would be if we applied Second Chronicles 7.14, we could have a Nineveh moment in this country. And I said to Chuck, I said, I've been hearing lately that you're not no longer teaching Second Chronicles 7.14. And he said, no, I'm very concerned that we might be past that point. And I said to Chuck, I said, well, if we're past that point, then are we not having now a Jeremiah 7.16 moment? Matter of fact, can you go to Jeremiah 7.16? Really? Now, Jeremiah mentions three times in his uh, book, his chapters, that a time would come where the Lord would say, look, don't even do intercession anymore for the southern kingdom of Judah. Jeremiah 7, 16. Go ahead. This is a tragic verse. Uh, the Lord says, therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Yeah, it, it reached a point so bad for the southern kingdom of Judah where the Lord said to Jeremiah, his, his go-to guy, his prophet at that time, he said, listen, don't even pray for these people anymore. Point of no return. Yeah. Now remember, God knows the end from the beginning. He knew if the southern kingdom of Judah was going to have a Nineveh moment, if they were going to you know, go use the Second Chronicles 7.14 model. And he realized that's not going to happen. So he said to Jeremiah, look, tell them now that you're not going to, you know, I, I, don't even pray to me for, me for them anymore. I'm not going to listen. You need to warn them for captivity. Prepare them for 70 years of captivity. There's going to be a discipline. So in Jeremiah 7:25 and elsewhere, he starts talking about, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 25. He starts saying, you're going to go into captivity. That was their now prophecy. Mm -hmm. That was, you better get ready for that. You know, Jeremiah chapter 49 talks about Damascus and Jordan and Iran, but that was not relevant to them around 586 BC. Relevant to us now, but they were, that was their now prophecy. And he said, don't even pray for them anymore. Get them ready for that. So that's what he started to do at that point in time. So then I said to Chuck, he said, well, that's interesting, Bill. So our prayers going up to the Lord may not being, be heard at this point. Well, what if they're not? Oh, my goodness. I mean, is that possibly what's going on? And then I said, well, Chuck, if that's the case, then we need to prepare for a Hosea 4, 6 moment. Do you want to go to Hosea 4, 6? Sure. And let me, let me set the stage for that. And Ho the book of Hosea, Hosea was one of the prophets to the northern kingdom of Israel who was destroyed in 722 B.C. by the Assyrian Empire. And he, he, along with Isaiah and Amos, were some of the prophets that were warning the northern kingdom of their judgment that was to come. And he says in chapter 14, excuse me, chapter 4, Hosea 4, he, in the beginning he's starting to talk to all the inhabitants of the land, whether they had faith or not. 
And then we find out down in later in chapter 4, I think around verse 11 or something, it says, those who lack understanding will be trampled. So in other words, I'm speaking to all the inhabitants of the land. You need understanding. And if you lack that understanding, you're going to be trampled. You won't be prepared when the judgment comes. And this is what he says in Hosea 4, 6. Here it is. <clears throat> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. See, there you go. That's judgment. My people are destroyed, or in other translations, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And it wasn't that the knowledge wasn't given to them. If they didn't get the memo, it wasn't God's fault. Hosea, Amos, Isaiah was talking about that, as well as other prophets around. Unfortunately, the religious leadership of their day, like the religious leadership in many of the pulpits of our day, are not talking about the relevant issues we need to talk about, the now prophecies for our time. So the people of God back then perished for lack of the knowledge that God was trying to get to them, and they just weren't receiving it or hearing it. Okay? That's my concern right now. I said this to Chuck. I said, okay, so if judgment's coming, it will not only affect the lost who do not believe in Christ, but it will affect those who do believe in Christ who are not hearing about this message and are not preparing for the potential judgment and destruction in whatever format they, that may come. They're not being prepared for it right now. And that's what I'm trying to prepare people for in this book. And Chuck, at the time, he said, oh my goodness, he took a little napkin and got his pen out and started writing those verses down. Yeah. That's where we could be right now. I'm very concerned about it. You know, Jonathan kahn has been on your show many times. He wrote the best-selling Christian book, The Harbinger. No, he's been trying to warn, as, as other prophetic voices, that this country needs to make a serious turnaround, a repentance, a Nineveh moment. And uh, I think most of us are very concerned that, you know, maybe the Lord knows that's not going to happen. And then that's when he would say to Jeremiah, don't pray for them anymore, it's time to get them ready. Like Hosea, get them ready, because otherwise they're going to perish for lack of knowledge. One of the chapters in the book is my people, uh, will Americans perish for lack of knowledge? Okay. And I'm, I'm going into that story and, and, and my concerns right now. Well, what we were just speaking about, uh, whether we've crossed the line of no return or not, God knows. And if he speaks to our hearts, as he did to Jeremiah's, uh, we will know if we should stop praying for America to repent. But uh, we could be near that line. You mentioned, uh, you know, how we've kicked God out of school. We kicked him out of the public square. Uh, we've uh, redefined marriage. We've um, legalized abortion on demand on and on and on and on we have thumbed our nose at God as a nation he will not tolerate this forever now you talk about America in decline what would that look like right right um, well we're the greatest superpower that ever lived we're hard to find in the Bible people have written books about this the late great United States with Mark Hitchcock and, right um, and of course Harbinger with Jonathan Kahn and there's other ones out there Joe Rosenberg called implosion you know uh -huh. concerning titles for these books and they're they're also very concerned about this country so you know we became a superpower country and blessed nation for several reasons our primary role was we were to be a safe haven for the jewish people you know god establishes the boundaries and the times and the purposes for nations um, and that's why we have so many jews here right right um, we were also to be a beacon of christianity into the nations of the world and throughout the church age, if you do your research, probably America, above all nations, reached out the furthest and the farthest in the world and preached Agreed. the gospel. Agreed. And then lastly, we're to be a, um, involved in the restoration of the nation of Israel and a supporter and, and preservation force for the nation of Israel. And, you know, we've done those things. However, presently, we are, are we really supporting Israel at this point? We're asking them to give up land for peace, uh, things that are not biblically endorsed. Israel, by the way, I'll tell you, dear viewers, the international community believes Israel is occupying that territory over there. They thought it was disputed territory. But they have the right to that land. God gave it to Abraham mm -hmm. in Genesis 15, 18. And the world's trying to get them to contract, but you watch, Israel's about to expand, which is also another now prophecy. I get into some of those verses in there. Folks, you need to realize that if these now prophecies are about to happen, um, big things are going to happen. Things are going to change, and the things you're being seeing on the news and the international perspectives are going to be trumped by God's view. People need to ask, what is God saying about what's going on right now? You know, 
who, who, what do we need to do to prepare for what God is trying to let us know is going to happen? And that's what this book is going to do, Kevin. The decline of America can come in different formats. Um, you know, it could come in a, a general devastation, a wipeout. I personally think we're actually in Ezekiel 8, 38, verse 13, as the young lions of the merchants of Tarshish, where we see ourselves, most of us would teach, as protesters in that. We're not fighting for Israel. Um, it mentions merchants of Tarshish, so there's commercial relationships mm-hmm. inter- intertwined in there. Why wouldn't we fight for Israel to protect those relationships? Russia's coming after plunder and booty. Why would we not try to prevent that? We've been Israel's friend all this time. So I see us in a less than superpower status in the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. And I can say that from this point forward, I think that downward slide is happening. And I don't think things are going to get better. Do we not pray for this country? Yes, pray for this country. Maybe things can turn around. I'm not trying to sit here and say, God told me he's not going to hear your prayers anymore. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just saying this is the biblical precedent. You look at what happened in, at the time of Abraham with Sodom and Gomorrah when they had sexu- sexual perversion. You look at the time when idol worship with the northern kingdom of Israel, they were destroyed by the Assyrian Empire in 722 for idol worship, which led to child sacrifice. Right. You look at what happened to the Assyrian Emp- Empire with their wickedness and moral decadence, decadence in 606 BC when they were conquered by the Medes and the Babylonians. And you look at what happened to Pharaoh when he was anti-Semitic about the Jewish people and the Hebrews and God was going to get them into the promised land and he tried to prevent that. And his armies were destroyed at the Red Sea. Are we not crossing all those same boundaries? Why would we deserve a different treatment than what God has already displayed in his Bible historically? No, folks, you cannot get away with this sort of stuff. You need to repent and you need to accept Jesus Christ now individually and let that individuality, that faith in God, lead toward a, toward a corporate expansion into the nation. Agreed, agreed. So we need to uh, pray as long as God gives us uh, the desire and the breath to do it for our nation. We need to be involved, but ultimately, uh, you know, this isn't our nation. This isn't our ultimate destiny. Our citizenship is in heaven. That's right. From whence we look for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, John 14, read John 14 for a moment as we close on this. John 14, he's building our mansions in heaven. Jesus has gone away 2,000 years ago. He was called up to heaven. He's going to read to you what he's been doing. I think he's just about done with those mansions in heaven if he's not already done. A place for everyone who believes in him. I believe the welcome mats with the believers' names are out there. I believe their mailbox has got their name on them. I believe the kitchen cabinets are in. Go ahead and read it to them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And he says a few verses later, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father but through me. You don't get... To get into one of those places prepared unless you go through Jesus Christ who loves you desperately, who gave his life for you, who delights in the children of men. He is wanting to embrace you right now. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you need to do that right now. Don't put your faith in some political superhero that you think is going to turn the ebbs and tides of this country. I hope that happens. I hope we've got an end of a moment. But what I know we do have right now is Jesus Christ who's risen from the grave, who's returning to fetch his bride in the near future and will come again after that and judge this planet. And folks, we're talking about serious times right now. Things are not going to get better in this world. The biblical prophecies are about to find fulfillment. I invite you along with Dr. Clarkson and Prophecy in the News, let's get this book and this package, not because I'm trying to sell products, but because we're trying to inform people about what's going on. You've heard our guest Bill Solace with an urgency speaking from God's word. We need to be ready for Christ. Two things to do if you don't know Christ personally, receive him into your life. You do that by faith. We're saved by grace through faith. That faith is expressed in the simple prayer of inviting him to come into your life, express your belief in him, and then share what Christ does for other people so they too can be ready. Keep looking up. He's coming back.